Okay, um, our next talk about the um, identity governance and data protection with Bitcoin, and I'm turning to Radovan and Katarina. Please welcome. Thank you. So, welcome. Uh, today we would like to talk uh, about uh, Bitcoin, which is identity management and governance uh, uh, product. And my name is Elvan Semanci, and we are part of the Bitcoin Core Development Team. So, it is quite difficult to explain identity management, governance, and data protection in 30 minutes. So, we have figured out <laughs> that the best way how to do it is to show an examples and demos. So, maybe that would be the fastest way to, uh, to explain the things. So, we have prepared an example of a university environment, academic environment. It is quite magical, obviously, but also very traditional environment. So it has traditional problems. Like there is HR system, and data from HR, HR system needs to be synchronized to a directory, but there is no direct path. There are applications that are based on the database that we need local database records and so on. There are legacy systems that we would not like to see anymore, but well, it's difficult to remove them. So it's a typical environment in universities, enterprises, and actually <coughs> almost any bigger organizations. So the usual solution to this is to put identity management system there. So identity management system can take the data from HR system, student records, employee records, all, all the workers and then volunteers and so on, and then synchronize the data to all the system that the, the data are needed there. And that's exactly what we want to like uh, to, to show you in the first uh, first demonstration. For simplicity, we have chosen just two systems: one HR system, then Midpoint, and and then LLAP as a uh, as a target system. So let's eat. So let's go. Thank you. 
uh, if you include the profile of site users, for example, we can choose Audit Under. We can see uh, the basic information uh, about uh, Audit Under, which were, were also pulled from the HR system, and the uh, assignments were also created uh, according to data from the HR system. So we can see that the uh, Audit Under is a part of the professor organizational unit and is also manager of auxiliary and manager uh, of the professor organizational unit. On the tab projection, you can see that Audit Under has two accounts. Uh, first uh, account is HR account, which, were, which is uh, the sort of account in the HR, so in the CSV file, and the uh, open LDAP account, which is the uh, dark code, which is the account which will spread during this import in the open LDAP. Uh, we can also see that uh, as the output actor is um, a member of uh, the professors and auxiliary organizational unit, he was uh, also added to the rules in the open LDAP. So, what we have done here is that we have all the data from the HR synchronized through the midpoint to the LDAP directory. It, it was actually quite easy to do, wasn't it, right? It, it was very easy. And there are a few things that you haven't seen so far. One of the things that you haven't seen is what, what is not there. And what is not there is the programming. This is a completely declarative way how to synchronize the data, except for maybe one line of scripts to transform something like a first name and last name to a full name. Things like that, construct VM and so on. So that's the only program here. Everything else is declarative. So that also means that adding new target systems like this or this is quite easy. It has connectors to connect to these systems that make protocol adaptation. And then configuration that, that set up the way how the attributes here are created or managed or synchronized with the other systems and so on. So this is identity management. And when you think about it, well, if you have something like a very smart Python script, it can actually do almost the same thing like right here. Maybe not that well as midpoint, but it can. But what, what you cannot do with, with a simple script is to actually do the management stuff, to manage the identities. And that's what's called identity governance, and we will see that next. So, okay, the first thing you need to know uh, before we start with the identity governance uh, role. Uh, role in a is basically the implementation of role-based access control. So you can specify in a role which privileges and accesses and uh, groups uh, uh, the users uh, will get after assigning the role to him. So let's, let's look on some uh, um, role, for example, transfiguration feature. Uh, uh, so we, um, the definition of this uh, role is and here we can see that uh, uh, assigning the role of transfiguration feature to some users, the user will uh, uh, get the account in the open LDAP. And if we look into the more details of uh, this configuration, we can see that the users will also be a member uh, of transfiguration feature group. So, so now what we are going to do, we are going to hire one new professor which is you know, they are a lot hard, everybody's favorite. So uh, what, what we need to do to hire a new professor is obviously to have him in, in the HR system, but the complete organizational structure is not defined completely by the HR system. So Builder or Lockhart will ask for a professor role, and the policy is con the configured policy in midpoint is that there needs to be two approvers to, to grant a professor role. First, it needs to be approved by a manager, which is Dumbledore in, the, in this case, and then it also needs to be approved by the Minister of Magic. So let's see the process. <laughs>
uh, if I look into my profile now, I can really see the <coughs> roles are not assigned yet, but in the assignment. So uh, let's wait for an Alexander to make a decision. So now I'm looking uh, as a double Alexander and I can see that uh, there are two requests. After looking into it, I can see um, who asked for what. And also, I can see that uh, also there, are, there are two stages, and I can also look into uh, detail that I'm the first approver, and uh, there is also a second approver. So the responsibility is not mine, but the uh, Colonel Dispatch to uh, uh, decide if uh, it's uh, safe to go. So, uh, as the Alvidamdor, let's go for uh, both requests. And now we can log in uh, as the Colonel Dispatch. And you can also see that now he has two assignments to be brought up to the full design. Uh, we can see also the same, and we can, uh, in addition, you can see uh, the first approval. Okay, so uh, who was the first approval? What was his decision? And also the comments or uh, anything else. So on the full request. And let's now look uh, on the, the profile of the. Yeah. And if you look here, you can see that there are four assignments that two assignments are added. And uh, also, uh, if you look here into the details of the account, you can see that uh, the other profile was added to. So the next dark art and the other part of this is proceeding. Okay, so this was the let's say first scenario um, related to identity governance. And um, of course this this is not everything. So uh, now let's pretend that uh, I'm in Rapid Mapify and uh, I want to be a member of Gryffindor uh, or Team. Uh, as uh, I'm a member of Slytherin Quidditch team, it's quite the really close to be a member of the Gryffindor Swedish team as they are two competing teams. So, uh, uh, yes, I switched the uh, oh, <laughs> Periodically, typically once per year, 
whether these particular users need st still need to have these particular privileges. So let's see. So here we can see the campaign definition of the After looking into the details of the campaign, you can see that there are many reviewers for different users of different SMS or different roles. So um, uh, let's log in as uh, one of them, one of the reviewers, which is Albert Amador as lead manager for the auxiliary and also professor vaccination unit. And we can see that there are 22 items uh, for Albert Amador to decide. So
we have this, uh, at least one assignment, we have the little basics to keep uh, information about users in Bitcoin. Uh, after we do it all of uh, this assignment, we have no uh, little basics uh, to keep, for example, the cell phone number anymore in our Bitcoin. So, first, uh, if you remember the story of uh, the uh, it was a professor, but not forever, but for a uh, short time. So, we moved in from the professor orientation only. Okay? Or do you have a, com a community of external contributors also? Yeah, okay. So the question is if uh, if Bitcoin uh, is developed only by uh, one company or is there any other community behind it? Most of the development is done by, by Evolver, which is one company. Uh, but there are external contributors, but to be completely honest, not in the product core. There are bug fixes coming in, some extensions and some examples. There is actually a community, maybe even of a hundred, maybe even more. But the vast, vast majority of development is done by, by all of them. More questions? How can I plug my piece of functionality to use your identity um, management? Um, do you have? Do you offer API? If Midpoint offers uh, API, yes. so there are many ways how to plug in functionality. From the very simple, like these one-liner scripts to compose a distinguished name or full name, to the very very complex hooks inside Midpoint. And in the extreme case, Midpoint is open source. It is Apache license, so you can just check out the code and modify what you like. But yes, there is an API. Actually, two APIs. There is small salt API and REST API in the technology function. Any more? Um, quick question. Um, in your demonstration, you used um, user accounts objects. What about uh, computer accounts objects? Because, for example, 
Well, there are no secrets for additive development. <laughs> additive development knows that way. Because that's, that's, that's the hub in, in, the, in the wheel. Everything goes through additive development. But of course, we are trying to protect at least the passwords and several things. We cannot actually encrypt everything because in this way we probably cannot use that for correlation. Database will not work if you work on non encrypted values. So we are encrypting passwords, for example, because we do need to correlate these. So we have a special application for encryption for passwords. For the rest, we are just keeping in midpoint everything in clear. Yeah. So you can rely on database so description. Like some city information on for the uh, password. There may be, and that's the reason I think the management tool is always a sensitive thing. Okay. But you can use database level encryption there, and of course you can use network level encryption there. But identity management system itself will see the data. Okay. It has to process them, so it needs to see them. Right. Okay. And I guess that's it. Yes. So thank you again.